Good afternoon. Uh, it's always difficult when you have our Nepali friend uh, talk in front, come in front of us because uh, we, Nepal and Bhutan, uh, talk about the same things. Coming from a very mountainous country uh, like Bhutan and you come to a conference like this where you talk about oceans, uh, it mesmerizes people like us who have never seen an ocean before. I'm thankful to the organizers uh, in Perth for bringing us here to Perth and I saw the ocean, I saw the beaches and thank you very much for that. Back home, most Bhutanese uh, have never seen what an ocean is, especially the older generation. The only thing that we know about oceans is that some of the trade that we do, because 80% of our trade is with India, but 20% of our trade, exports and imports, are through third countries. That trade also happens up to Calcutta port. From Calcutta onwards to Bhutan, you have to put all your goods on trucks and go winding up the mountains 6,000, 7,000 meters over sea level. So as I said, I was just wondering what I'm going to talk about, but this morning, the foreign minister of Timor Leste, who seems to be sitting in the middle of the biggest oceans, said that he doesn't want to talk about oceans, but he wants to talk about seas. So I felt quite comfortable that we can talk about our rivers. Bhutan is highly dependent on its rivers for the water that we drink, for the irrigation water that we get, and the hydropower that we produce, which is the largest sector of trade that we do with our neighbors. When you look at the rivers, as a geography student, they always taught us that the water emanates from the oceans, that the water evaporates, comes to the mountains, precipitates into rain, feeds all of us, and goes back and replenishes the oceans. I think the thing for the conference to note and remember is that these rivers do replenish the oceans that you have. In many ways, it also brings about the regional development, regional integration that we have. Yesterday, Ambassador Anil Trigunayat of India mentioned about the trade that we do with India in hydropower. It constitutes 70 to 80% of the trade that we do. But that dependence of that water in the long term, whether it is sustainable for countries like ourselves and Nepal and the Himalayas, is something that we need to discuss, we need to invest in. The Himalayas, as my Nepali friend mentioned, is called the third pole. As I understand it, it provides drinking water and irrigation water to half the population of this world. Yesterday there was a mention that the Indian Ocean countries constitute about two billion people, of which I understand that 1.5 billion depend on the water that comes down the Himalayas. But those Himalayas are no longer as sustainable as you might like to think. The monsoons are very erratic. The summers are much more hotter. There is less snowfall. The glaciers are melting. The worry is these rivers of the Himalayas, would they be available perpetually 
for the present 1.5 billion people who live downstream? If not, are we going to do something about it? We are committed as a country, a very small country, a poor country, to remain carbon negative. We are probably one of the very few countries in the world who can go around and say that we are carbon negative. 72% of our country is under forest cover. We are not willing to cut those forests. We are not willing to invade into our ecology and environment and biodiversity to ensure that Bhutan as a country survives into the long-term future. But global warming and climate change are not going to segregate Bhutan as a small country, so you are committed to preserving the ecology and the environment, and therefore we are going to leave you apart. Global warming and climate change are affecting each and every one of us. So at a conference like this, I think it's important, as my friend from Nepal mentioned, that we also note that there is a micro mountain ecology that feeds into the oceans. And an innovative idea that you could take from this conference is to look at the oceans, but also look at the waters that feed the oceans. Ambassador Trigu Nayat yesterday, Anil Trigu Nayat yesterday mentioned that a lot of people make a lot of commitments, but under deliver. And that has been the experience so far. I think we need to deliver on our promises. I was one of the few people from Bhutan also to attend COP28. Interesting because Bhutan depends entirely on its environment, on its ecology, on its hydropower. But the type of promises that are being made and the delivery of those promises, I think needs to be far more than what is today. For a sustainable, stable Indian Ocean, I feel very much strongly that this conference should also endorse taking care of the mountains from where you get the water that feeds the oceans. Thank you very much.